So I'm going to work through a sinusoidal steady state example of a high pass filter. And the basic example is a resistor and an inductor in series, and we take the output voltage across the inductor. And the input voltage is a cosine, so it's a sinusoidal function with real amplitude Vn. So that's just some number like 3 volts or something. And we're being asked to find Vout, which should also be a sinusoidal function with some amplitude. Um, and that amplitude will, will, in general, as we see, depend on the frequency. So uh, to approach this problem, it helps to define some new variables. So the first will be something we call Vn tilde, um, which will basically be a complex version of our Vn. So we're going to take Vn e to the j phi times e to the j omega t. And you'll see that uh, Vn is just the real part of this complex number because that e to the j phi e to the j omega t can be written out as cosine omega t plus phi plus j sine omega t plus phi. We can simplify um, things or make them more complex, however you choose to, to view it, I guess, um, another way by taking uh, this, uh, one more step by taking this vn e to, the j omega, uh, e to the j phi and calling it vn, capital vn tilde. And then uh, the little vn tilde is just the capital vn tilde, which is like a complex amplitude, times some e to the j omega t, which is basically just a, it's a beat. You know, it just goes around every omega, every 2 pi over omega. Uh, it's just going around the complex plane. Um, and it's uh, fairly sort of not that relevant to the problem because it's going to appear in both the input and it'll turn out it'll, it'll appear in the output as well. So that allows us to just solve for this relatively simple circuit. Um, we take a DC source with complex voltage, uh, capital VN tilde, and then we try to find the DC output voltage, capital uh, V out tilde. And instead of using resistor and inductor, we now have complex impedances. Well, it turns out, of course, the complex impedance of a resistor is still real, so that's a no brainer, ZR equals R. Um, but for the L, we replace it with a uh, uh, impedance of J omega L, which from the point of view of a DC circuit just looks like a resistor. So then uh, we have this V out tilde uh, is going to equal that DC output voltage times that sort of boring E to the J omega T term that just keeps on clicking along. And then V out is going to uh, equal the real part of the V out tilde function. So we'll solve for this V out using our very simple DC circuit analysis, and then we'll plug that in here, take the real part to find V out. Now the, uh, the circuit is just a voltage divider, so we just use the usual voltage divider relation, ZL over ZR plus ZL. Um, substituting in for the impedances, we get this. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you multiply by the source voltage, Vn. And we'll do another substitution of variables, h of j omega, Vn tilde, um, where basically we've taken this voltage divider relation and put it into something called a transfer function. So the transfer function is equal to the ratio of V out divided by Vn, is another way of looking at that. And the transfer function will, in general, be complex, so we can write it as this uh, complex function, h of j omega, magnituded. Uh, times e to uh, the argument uh, h of j omega. So that, that's a polar notation form of that uh, function. And remembering that the magnitude of a quotient is just the quotient of the magnitudes, um, we can take the magnitude of h of j omega easily. j omega l, the magnitude is just omega l. Um, r plus j omega l, that magnitude is a little trickier if you don't remember uh, your complex numbers. You, uh, you have to remind yourself that this complex number in the polar coordinate system uh, is going to look like the real part r along the x-axis and the imaginary part omega l across the imaginary axis. And so the magnitude is the length of this hypotenuse, or, uh, the, well, just from the Pythagorean theorem, r squared of r squared plus omega squared l squared. So that gives you this expression for the total magnitude. Um, the argument can be found similarly by taking uh, h of j omega uh, is equal to the argument of the uh, numerator 
minus the argument of the denominator. Um, if you remember your polar complex numbers, uh, so j, the argument of j is just pi over 2, and uh, the angle corresponding to this uh, r plus j omega l function is going to be the arctangent of um, the omega l over r. So it's going to be this angle in here. So with that, you get to this pi over 2 minus the arctangent. That's our, our angle. So now we can write our h of j omega t uh, as this amplitude times this uh, phase term. Well, we're almost done because if you remember, the output voltage was the real part of the complex V out, which was the real part of this DC um, complex amplitude times that e to the j omega t term. Um, but we just solved up here for, uh, and showed here that it's equal to, that, that capital V out was equal to h of j omega V in, so plugging in down here, we get that h of j omega v in for that v out term. Now the real part, um, the easiest way to find this is going to be to put the h of j omega into the polar notation, which is why we went to the whole trouble of doing that. And then we're going to get an amplitude, which uh, is going to be the h of j omega times v in, and we're going to get this whole nasty uh, thing in the phase, which is basically the omega t from there, the phi, and then the argument of h of j omega, which we just derived to be pi over 2 minus the arctangent of omega l over r. And over here, uh, we have that magnitude that we derived above. So that's the answer. That's basically the, the real part. Um, we notice we threw away the, sign, the j sine term here from the exponential. We just are left with the cosine term. And there's a couple quick things to notice about it that basically are what it makes make it a filter. Um, the first is that this magnitude of h is always less than 1 because omega l is always going to be sm smaller than uh, the square root of omega squared, plus l, uh, omega squared l squared plus another term. So omega, this term will always be less than 1. Uh, and in particular, for low omega, it's going to be a lot less than 1. Uh, this is an approximation to it, and you can uh, work on that uh, to prove that, but it's not too hard. Uh, just do a series expansion. And so you basically you end up with a V out being a very small number for low frequencies. So that means that low frequencies get attenuated more than high frequencies, and that's what makes it a high-pass filter. So another way to see that is basically if you just look at the original circuit and you imagine a sinusoid coming in here, if it's a high-frequency sinusoid, then you have a large impedance in the inductor because it's J omega L. So if omega is large, then this is a large resistance. And all of this voltage drop is going to drive current through here, but most of that voltage drop is going to occur across that impedance, and it won't be attenuated. Uh, if, on the other hand, you have a low frequency, well, this uh, just looks like a wire, and it's basically going to short out the output. So you're going to have a very low output voltage drop compared to the voltage drop across the resistor. So uh, that's another way of seeing why this circuit behaves as a high-pass filter.